These are going to be class notes on human development, just the very, very basics. So take your notes, and um, actually what we're going to do is flip them to the back side for a minute, because I'd like to introduce a couple of words. So we're on the back. We're going to go down to the bottom here. All right. I want to start with a couple of basic ideas. Um, the first idea that I want to talk about is fertilization. So um, we're going to start out with a definition. Fertilization just um, is the joining of egg and sperm. So the egg and sperm unite. Um, the nucleus of both of those cells unites. And remember that inside of a sperm cell, for a human anyway, there's 23 chromosomes and <clears throat> 23 different kinds of chromosomes. And in the female egg, there are also 23 chromosomes. So when the sperm and the egg unite, um, you will get a cell called a zygote. Now, the zygote has 46 chromosomes, and it's got a full set. It's got the one set from the dad, one set from the mom, okay? And so now you've got this zygote. A zygote, the definition of a zygote is simply that it is a fertilized egg. I hope you can read all of this. So that's a fertilized egg. That's what a zygote is. Now, let's look uh, at these chromosomes again. So <clears throat> the chromosomes in this cell um, are not paired, nor are they paired here. However, when you get to the zygote, if you could look at those chromosomes, you would be able to zoom in with a powerful microscope, and if you were an embryologist anyway, you could look at the chromosomes and say, ah, there's chromosome number one in there. And you could say, oh, and there's another chromosome number one. Because one of those chromosome ones came from mom, one came from dad. Again, you could look in the microscope and say, oh, there's a chromosome two, and there's the other chromosome two. Again, because one of them came from mom and one came from dad. So what I'm trying to get at is that a zygote actually has two of every kind of chromosome, whereas these sex cells have only one kind of every chromosome. All right. So we call these cells that just have one of every kind of chromosome, we call these haploid cells. All right, now that's a new vocab word for us. So um, a haploid cell then, haploid cells have one of each kind of chromosome. In other words, the chromosomes in this sperm cell cannot be paired up. There are no pairs of chromosomes there are no pairs of chromosomes in this egg cell. However, when they join, when the chromosomes join in the zygote, you will find pairs of chromosomes. And so that is why we call um, the zygote a diploid cell. Di, think about di, two. So um, you in a, in a diploid cell, um, this is a cell um, that has two of each kind of chromosome. Okay. So a diploid cell, you actually pronounce it diploid. I, I pronounced it diploid to emphasize the fact that di means two. So 
a diploid cell has two of each kind of chromosome. All right. So now we know the difference between a diploid cell and a haploid cell. Those words will come in handy a little bit later um, <clears throat> in our studies, but I wanted to introduce them to you. You should know what fertilization means, and you should know what a zygote is. Okay? All right. So let's go now to the front. And the front of your worksheet is where we're going to go through the stages of development. Now, I will expect you to know these stages in order and what happens in each one and what the drawing looks like. So, <clears throat> we're going to start with day zero. Day zero is fertilization. What does that look like? Well, here's our egg. Here's our sperm. And I got to post my paper a little better. Um, there we go. So the egg and sperm are uniting, okay? Now, I want to talk a little bit about why in real life the sperm is, is many times smaller than the egg. Okay, the sperm really just needs to deliver the chromosomes to the egg. The egg needs to have a big storehouse of food, as in carbs, proteins, lipids, for the developing embryo. That developing embryo is going to be... Um, basically rolling around in the female reproductive system for s about seven days or so. It won't have implanted into the mom yet. Uh, so there won't be that placenta and umbilical cord feeding the, the embryo. So this egg is pretty gigantic compared to the sperm because this is like a big fridge full of food for the developing embryo. All right, so fertilization, what is it? Uh, well, remember we said it is the union of egg, when, egg and sperm. Okay, that's the definition. All right, so then once that happens, day one of life, we have something called a zygote. So that's our zygote. It has 23 chromosomes from mom, 23 from dad in the case of a human. So that's what the zygote is. What's the definition of it? Definition of a zygote is a fertilized egg. Okay? Now, remember, it has two sets of chromosomes. Oops, has two sets of chromosomes. Okay? All right. Now, that zygote is going to start dividing by mitosis, cell cycle. Remember our cell cycle cheer? Hi, P. Matt C. Um, so this zygote, I'm going to kind of draw what's happening over here. The zygote will be right here, and in a certain amount of time, it's going to divide into two cells. Okay, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, boom, two cells. And then a little bit later, those two cells are also going to divide by mitosis, and you'll have four cells. And then those four cells will each divide by mitosis. Okay, so we'll have these, and they'll divide, and now we've got eight cells, and so on. And so um, this keeps going and going. So for days one through five, you have several cell divisions. And pretty soon, you get this ball of cells, okay? Now, from the outside, it's going to look something like this with a bunch of cells. If we could cut that cell open and look at it from the side, it's going to look like this. And it's going to be a hollow ball, by now, hollow ball of cells. And I'm just going to draw it like this. Now, those of you that are really studying a lot more intense embryonic development, you'll know that um, I'm kind of skipping some stuff, but this is what we're learning. So this ball of cells, this is a hollow ball of cells, it's actually filled with liquid, um, but the cells have formed into this circle shape, and it's a fluid-filled ball. I like to say that it's a hollow ball of cells. Okay, and that's called a blastula. Now, our textbook uh, calls it a blastocyst. So 
blastula, aka also known as a blastocyst. Okay, a blastocyst is a hollow ball of cells. Okay, now this hollow ball of cells, a um, couple things about it. All the cells are identical. And um, they are undifferentiated. All cells are, look at this word, undifferent. They're undifferent. And the word is undifferentiated. Okay. Moving on. So now we're going to start with our little blastocyst. And days 5 through 56, we're moving on. I'm going to draw a little picture of this cell. So here's the ball of cells. And there starts to be a little indentation on the surface of that cell. The cells are going to start migrating and pushing in. So when I tell my students that it looks like an olive, it does kind of look like an olive. Okay. Now, this little structure right here, this dimple, is called a blastopore. Okay, so this is my blastocyst. Here's the blastopore, and over the next several, you know, eight weeks, this blastopore is going to push in. Um, if we could see it from the side view, it will look kind of like Pac Man. Looks like a little cell with a mouth, and over time, that little indentation, if we could look at it from the side, is going to go deeper and deeper. Keep going, series here. And almost all the way through, and then it actually does make its way all the way through. And if we could look at this ball, um, straight on, here's what we would see. We would see something called now a gastrula. And it's going to have three layers. So it's, di it's differentiated in this stage. Um, it's going to have this outer layer of cells that I'm kind of tracing over. So this would all be a bunch of cells on the outside. Um, that little dimple will have pushed all the way in. Now I'm going to Imagine that you can see through this. So imagine a little piece of silly putty or Play-Doh, and I've punched a hole all the way through. So you can see from one side to the other through this opening. Okay? Kind of like a mouth. All right? So we've got a mouth that stuck, goes here, and actually it goes to the other end. So um, <clears throat> when you think about it, you got two openings in your body. One's the mouth. The other end is, you guessed it, um, the anus. So from the side view, we're just looks like one opening, okay? So we've got this outer layer, black. That's going to be the outer layer of cells. Here's this inner layer of cells. And this blue I'm coloring is going to represent a whole bunch of cells. That's going to be this middle layer. We're going to call it the middle layer. Now, this picture that I just drew with the three layers is called a gastrula, okay? And over to the side, we've got our definition. What is a gastrula? A gastrula is a ball of cells with three layers. Three layers of cells. Okay. Now those layers of cells are called germ layers. Has nothing to do with germs, has more to do with maybe with the word germinate, like to, to spring forth or to, um, you know, to sprout, so to speak. So what is a germ layer? A germ layer is a layer of cells that will become 
organs and tissues. Okay, so we're going to see this little gastrula developing over time and different organs and tissues are going to um, emerge from each of these layers. So what's happening at this point is differentiation. So differentiation begins here. Some scientists, embryologists say gastrulation, the, formula, the forming of this thing, gastrulation is the most important day of your life because that's where you're getting all of your um, layers of cells to become all of your different organs and tissues. All right, so we're going to move on down here <clears throat> to the bottom. And the last stage in our story here, if you can imagine that you take this ball and you elongate it. Okay, you take a little ball of silly putty in your hands and you kind of roll it together, roll it around and start squeezing it like a snake. It's going to elongate and that's what the next phase is called, elongation. So what that's going to look like is this. Our, our ball, our gastrula is going to elongate, kind of hot doggy shape. And we will still have our outer layer of cells. So these are all cells. Okay, we called it the outer layer. You're going to find out that it's got a more technical name. That's my outer layer. I still have that. I said there's two openings, one here, one on the other side. So now we're going to be able to see it. Here's our so-called mouth. And it actually is a tube that goes all the way through to the other end. And yep, you know it, we call that the anus. So one of these ends is going to be, it's going to become your mouth. And this is, yes, it's going to become the anus. So this is a tube, goes all the way through. And then this layer that I'm going to color blue is all a bunch of cells. We call that the middle layer of cells. All right, let's learn what these layers, these germ layers are really called. Okay, and we'll draw them on our gastrula. So um, <clears throat> the outer layer in black is called the ectoderm. The inner layer that goes all the way through now is called the endo, it's all one word, derm. And then the blue is called the mesoderm. Now, if you know your prefixes, these words tell you what they are. Ecto means outer, so the outer derm, the outer layer. Endo means inner derm layer, inner layer, and mesoderm, middle layer. Okay, so on this, we've got black layer, ectoderm, your outer layer. Think about what you think that's going to become in this developing embryo. It doesn't look like an embryo, but it is. Um, this is your middle or mesoderm. And this red, I might as well color it the, my color scheme. So this red layer is my endoderm. Think about what you think that's going to become. If this is the mouth and anus, think about what system in your body that's going to become. So that's your endoderm. Okay? Now, elongation, just to put it quite simple, keep it very, very simple, is when the gastrula ball, when the gastrula ball of cells um, stretches out to a hot dog shape. Very technical, huh? Pretty fun. Okay, so that's the beginning. We're going to pause and um, do the backside in just a minute.